Hey guys, I don't know where this footage that I'm filming right now is gonna fit in amongst all of our fertility documentation since we have, you know, a bit of it here and there from over the past like year. But I'm starting this either new segment or new video out today. It is Monday, I think it's the 18th, May 18th, yeah. And today we are starting basically our first round of IUI. So I got my period, I started like spotting on Friday, but it wasn't like, you know, full flow. So Saturday, um, which today is Monday, so two days ago, was like my cycle day one. And finally our fertility clinic, um, you know, because of coronavirus and whatnot, we went the last like two months, two cycles, they were not taking patients or doing like any treatments whatsoever, um, unless you obviously were like currently already pregnant and whatnot. So we basically had to skip a couple months of being, even having the option to do anything. But I checked with them uh, in like the middle of last week and they're doing a modified IUI um, as like a treatment option right now. And that's what we are going to be trying out. So just to kind of give kind of some context on basically what that means because I didn't understand what like modified IUI meant. And pretty much what it is typically for a normal IUI cycle, you go in on cycle day three, which that's actually today for me. So Saturday was day one, Sunday was day two, today's Monday, day three. And you would go in and get blood work done. And I believe an ultrasound also. I think definitely blood work um, just to see kind of like where your hormone levels are at and things like that. And then you would start taking Clomid for also on cycle day three, four or five days. And then I think you would go back in sometime after taking Clomid, but obviously before you like ovulate. So I think maybe around day 10, cycle day 10, something like that, you would go in for more blood work and I believe another ultrasound to see um, how your levels are after Clomid and like before you're about to ovulate and also to just check like how your follicles are and your ovaries and all of that kind of stuff. And then you would get the trigger shot that would um, basically like forces you to ovulate. You get that and take that on a certain day in your cycle, which they determined for you based on your blood work and your ultrasound. And then you would go back into the office for a third time, like 30 to 36 hours after taking that trigger shot, which you just take that trigger shot at home, um, like your husband or even yourself can just administer it or your wife or whatever. And then you go back to the office for a third time to give the sperm sample. And then I think you wait two hours for them to like wash it. And then you do the actual insemination. So typically it's kind of a long process with a lot of doctor's office visits, a lot of blood work, a lot of ultrasounds, a lot of medicines between the Clomid and the shot and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, that's why I was so intimidated and daunted by it for so long. Like not that I put it off, but I just, I wasn't super eager, excited to start it only because I'm really not good with needles so like the whole blood work thing was like really not exciting especially having to constantly do blood work plus I mean it's kind of convenient right now because I'm not working but it was gonna be a little bit of a pain because obviously you can't even schedule any of this stuff in advance you have to wait till you get your period and then kind of like wait to see how things go with the blood work and the ultrasound so you basically are making these appointments like in very short notice so it's hard you know if you have work or you have a job where you know you work shifts that to you can't really kind of schedule these things you can't really take off it's kind of like last minute stuff so that always kind of stressed me out about it and like we don't live super close to our doctor so constantly going to and from there like making that drive constantly having Ken have to kind of shift his work schedule around it just seemed like it was going to be really overwhelming and just kind of a lot but the modified IUI cycle is actually something that I had kind of requested or suggested previously just because my, thankfully, my hormones, at least based on my previous blood work, are spot on, basically like as good as they can get. And I ovulate like very consistently the exact same day every single month, like at my period, the exact day I'm expected to get it, like my period and my cycle is just so regular that I was like, I just don't feel like I need to be getting all this blood work. And I don't really feel like I need to be getting these ultrasounds because I feel like my body is like so rhythmic that there's not a lot left up to chance because we kind of already know what it's doing. And I kind of suggested that to them and they said it's just, it's not optimal to skip those things. It's really obviously like, to do it the most optimal way possible. You wanna know exactly what your hormones are at, exactly what your follicles are looking like, which I get that, totally makes sense. But the modified version is basically kind of eliminating all those kind of like annoying things that I didn't wanna do. 
and doing a little bit more not like naturally but it basically skips the blood work and skips the ultrasound you basically take a pregnancy test um, which I took yesterday even though you're on your period you just have to take it just so that they have like documentation that you were not pregnant when you started taking these medications that I guess could I don't know force you to miscarry or whatever I'm not exactly sure but um, obviously you don't want to be pregnant when you're starting certain medications so took a pregnancy test yesterday obviously it was negative because I'm on my period um, but I guess you know some people could have the implantation bleeding and all kinds of things like that so just to be safe did that I originally talked to the nurse on Friday she said well since you're still spotting call me on Saturday leave me a message I'll get back to you first thing on Monday um, just you know because you have to call when you're on a full flow so just in case I guess your full flow doesn't come the next day um, they want you to just call that day so I called and left another message on Saturday a nurse called me back on well, I left the message on Saturday and also talked to a nurse on Saturday and then another nurse called me back on Sunday just to like basically get some information and pass it along to the nurse who called me this morning. So I talked to her. She put in the prescription for Clomid, which I need to take today and for the next five days, so Monday to Friday. So I'm going to go pick up my Clomid prescription here shortly at the pharmacy and then the rest of the cycle is like very low maintenance like I said you basically just eliminate the blood work eliminate all of the ultrasounds you still take the Clomid you do not take the trigger shot which I guess I'm not sure why maybe because they don't know what your blood hormone levels are at and whatnot they don't want you taking the trigger shot without knowing everything that's going on I'm assuming and so instead of doing the trigger shot you take just the um, OPKs the ovulation predictor it, tests the ovulation predictor tests which I take those every single month anyway but she did say that I should be taking digital ones this month just so like I can get a really really accurate like specific answer rather than just like how dark the line is so basically yeah you just take the Clomid days three to eight and then you start taking the ovulation tests starting on cycle day 10 once you get a peak you call them before 11 a.m on the day that you get the peak so that you can have an appointment to go in the following day like less than about 24 hours later to give the sperm sample and to get inseminated so that's really all we have to do i just have to go pick up my prescription take that for a couple days start taking the ovulation tests and then just go into the office once once i get a peak to do the actual iui so you're only going to the doctor's office once instead of three times and I'm only taking the Clomid and doing the insemination. I'm not doing the trigger shot, I'm not doing the blood work, I'm not doing the ultrasounds. So it's still IUI but it's just a less involved version and it, it seems to me like a little bit more uh, natural in a way. It's just less testing, less poking and prodding and that's what I would prefer. So I'm hoping that this will work and if this, obviously I'm hoping this works, I'm praying that this works. If it does then I would love to like just know that like we can just do IUI this easy simple way like every time we want to get pregnant. Obviously, if it doesn't work this time around, then I think what we'll do is we'll hold off and wait until the doctor's office is doing the normal IUI um, with the blood work and with the ultrasounds because obviously that gives you a lot more information. It's really optimal and if this doesn't work, I wouldn't want to waste another round or another cycle doing it the way that didn't work. I'd rather do the same thing but with all the extra information, all the extra data just to be sure we're doing the best possible thing we can do and getting it as like on the money as we possibly can. So that's pretty much our plan. I'm really excited. I'm really kind of glad that we're still like semi in quarantine right now. It's quarantine, kind of quarantine day 64. I don't know if I'm still considering this quarantine, but it's been 64 days since the world kind of shut down. And I'm kind of glad we're doing it right now because I'm not working. So I don't have to worry about, you know, being on this medication in case I have any weird side effects. I don't have to worry about any of that. I don't have to worry about moving anything around in order to make an appointment and I can just not that I can really focus on it because there's not much that I need to do but it is nice to not have anything else to like be stressed out about or to worry about or anything like that that's basically an update I know I just talked for forever that's what's going on so I'm gonna be kind of documenting this little part of the process just like we've been kind of documenting everything else and we'll see how this goes I'm really excited I'm really really hopeful so we'll see how it goes all right, I got the prescription. Here's my little guy. I didn't really, I've never had like a, well, I haven't had a prescription. I mean, Cam, we're talking about this since like literally high school, I feel like. But it's just to take it every day at the same time, once a day. So um, the nurse said to either do it in the morning or at night. So I'm just going to do it now. It's like 5.30 and I'll just take it at 5.30 every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
fertility be with us. Here we go. All right, it's that time. Taking another Clomid. I didn't notice any type of like side effects or I honestly didn't even like notice any difference whatsoever from taking it. So if I could get it out. Oh, ew. ew, that has a bad taste. If you leave it on your tongue for a second. All right, there it is. Yeah. Oh, I look ugly. I forgot. Don't show me. <laughs> it's like you're doing drugs. It does kinda. Oh, I just wanted to show day three. Clomid going down. <gasps> oh my gosh, I almost imagined if I lost it. Now though, what's your commentary? What do you think? Okay. It tastes bad. <laughs> mm. Boy, last day of Clomid. I didn't film uh, me taking it yesterday because we were at my um brother and sister-in-laws for like a little family birthday party so i had to like s sneak it because nobody knows that we're doing this i don't know if i've mentioned that in this video we haven't told anybody that we're doing this everyone still thinks that the doctor's offices are like closed for coronavirus which they have been for many months so we are just not mentioning it so that if it goes well it's a surprise if it doesn't we'll probably tell them but you know we just didn't want to put it all out there so i had to sneaky sneak it but it's the last little guy. I have this like stupid irrational fear that like when I've been taking these, like I haven't been swallowing them. <laughs> like they've been like going back into like the drink I'm drinking or something and then I miss one and then it won't work. But I know that's probably not actually real. Here it goes. Just using my tea to chase it. <sighs> all right. Wow, my hair. This is fine. <laughs> No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> so that is the end of that. So that's cool. And I suppose we should probably be going in for the actual insemination probably in less than a week. That's crazy. I'm going to take my folic acid actually while I'm at it. And um, I will up to you guys when that time comes. Okay. It is 7.07 .07 in the morning. I've been up for a little bit. I've been up for like half an hour just like in bed. <sighs> And I just took another ovulation test, not pregnancy test, just an ovulation test to try to see when we're doing this IUI and I'm getting so frustrated and confused because I always, always ovulate on my cycle day or I get like a peak on my ovulation test, meaning I ovulate 24 hours after that, but it's always on cycle day like, I think it's pretty much always a day 12 um sometimes 13 one time i think it's been like 11 but it's pretty much always cycle day 12 and so usually i start getting like pretty high lh results you know leading up to day 12 but today's day 12 right definitely no today's day 13 and i have gotten extremely extremely low ovulation test results for the past like five days i got a really really high, well not really high but high for day eight i got like almost a i got like a 0.98 so almost one on day eight which usually i don't even test on day eight usually i don't start testing till day like 10 or 11 and so it almost based on those results like looks like i ovulated on like cycle day seven or eight or nine when i should be getting like those kind of high lh levels and ovulating on day like 12 or 13 so yesterday I should have had like a blazing red ovulation result and I'm taking the digital ones too like the doctor said and they both were like literally goose egg nothing like zero on the digital like a big empty circle and extremely low like 0.47 on just regular strip tests and that's on day 12. Usually I should have gotten like super high ones for a few days leading up to that and I've gotten like nothing except for day 8 was high and then it's gotten lower and lower and lower. There's no way I ovulated like f three days after my period ended. So the test is working right now. It like needs to be high today or else something's wrong. So I'm going to check it now. Whew. So a solid smiley face means peak, right? Okay, can you even see it? So according to this box, the big goose egg, which is what I've been getting every day, that one there, means nothing. A shaking smiley face means high, and a still smiley face means peak. So, 
I didn't want to take one of my strip ones because I was like, I'm not sure. Because, okay, so for these ones, these like strip ones, it says not to take them with like your first morning pee. It says to do it like later in the morning, like after 11 o'clock. So that's when I've always done them. And I almost thought I messed this up because these say to take them like as if they were a pregnancy test, like with your first morning pee, which I didn't know at first so thank goodness i read those before it was like too late to start using them but i've been taking these in the morning along with it just like a to kind of have two different <laughs> sorry i'm putting the strip test in now um i've been taking that one alongside it the strip ones these which are what i've been using for <laughs> the year and a half that we've been trying and i've been using it just kind of as a backup like to confirm what this test says and then also to be able to put like tape into my um, little TTC journal but I didn't do one this morning because I was like well this is pointless and I'm not sure if you're really supposed to take those with the first morning pee but anyway I suppose I'll just do them together right might as well so I'm going to log this test so this is good I'm gonna see because I never I went from the goose egg to this like solid smiley face and I feel like usually you go from like goose egg to the high like nothing high peak instead of nothing to peak but i needed to see this today because otherwise i was going to freak out be like am i just not ovulating this month like of course the month that we're trying is the month that i just don't ovulate at all like that doesn't make any sense these digital ones are pretty crazy though i've never used these before but it is pretty cool but because i'm just like not comfortable with these like i've never used this before i have been wanting to do these along with it because i understand how these work and i feel like i know what to expect from the results on these so that's why i've been doing them together kind of like as you know, I don't know, double confirm the information. So I told Ken, I was like, if I don't get a high tomorrow, I don't know what's going on. And I'm wondering if, because I'm extremely consistent with my cycle every single month, it's I literally like get my period on the money, I ovulate on the money, but I'm wondering if because I took the Clomid this month and obviously Clomid has hormones in it, I don't know if that kind of like whacked out like what my system and cycle would typically do and kind of like, I don't know, re not reset it, but you know, kind of like made it on its own timing this time i'm not sure what the explanation is because i've never ovulated this late in my cycle but i want to see what that result says first and then i have to call the doctor oh also i just realized i'm dumb it's a flashing smiley face when you're on you're like high not shaking <laughs> oh and also it says you can't even use this again this smiley face is going to stay on here for the next 48 hours okay so i can't even take it again if i want to do all right we'll see what this other one says Sorry, this is gross, but thank the freaking lord. Look how red this is compared to that one. This is the control line. This is like blazing red. So, great news, and they like line up, and it all makes sense. When I woke up this morning, I was like, lord, if this is not come positive, I don't even know what to think. Okay, I'm gonna go tell Ken, and then we're gonna call the doctor. I'm getting inseminated tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. Ken's leaving for his appointment. All by himself. I'm not. Yeah. But what time is it? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go. Well, I mean, I could go and like sit in the waiting room, but they're not allowing like spouses or I don't know people to go with you. So it would be kind of pointless. I actually have some errands to run, but he's so nervous. It's yeah. so funny. How are you feeling? You're so, so excited. And excited. I mean, it's probably both. Probably more nervous. Nervous excitement. I guess. We're back in the car together. He had his appointment this morning at 11.30. And then he came back. I was out running some errands. I grabbed us lunch. And then we ate. And now we're in the car again on the way to my appointment. But it still kind of stinks because of the fact that, like, coronavirus is, like, still, you know, kind of a thing. They're not letting anyone bring like their spouse or anyone with them so I think he's just gonna have to wait in the waiting room and I'll just have to go in there by myself which kind of stinks but I guess we'll have to like we couldn't do it the full we were doing I think I probably talked about this we're doing the modified IUI if and when we do the full the, the regular IUI we would have to wait till you are allowed to come with me because I can't like get blood work and stuff without you yeah so we would have to wait anyway yesterday that they're like starting to loosen the restrictions but like they haven't gotten that specific like notice yet so but it's fine because it, I, I feel like it's gonna be like very similar to like a normal OBGYN appointment where they you know just I mean obviously it's different in the sense of the actual procedure but 
there's nothing too complicated about it other than me just laying there so that's it where we are headed it is like so gloomy and rainy it was actually like decent this morning but now it's raining which i'm gonna say is good luck it's funny because i watch um leanne says on youtube and she just like a week or two ago posted that her and her husband are also doing iui and they actually like did their iui procedure and she was saying how it was raining on the day that they did it too and so that's supposed to be good luck even though i don't know if it's actually good luck i feel like they just tell you that to make you feel better <laughs> but of course it's good yeah but it also rained on our wedding day so i don't know maybe that's hey and we also got married on a friday and it rained and today's a friday and it rained uh -huh. and i was born on a friday uh -huh. i don't know if it rained probably on the day i was born knowing nope. that that demon was born hey it rain. we can probably assume it rained though <laughs> so this should be pretty quick and painless i'm assuming i, I know that I, they make you like lay there for a little while i did my like not like my last workout per se but i don't know a lot everything i've read online says that you should not really work out like intensely after you get like this procedure done and i don't know if it's only for a certain amount of days or like what but the nurse said like just do whatever you normally do don't go crazy extra but like what i normally do is pretty intense so i think that i need to not be doing that at least for a couple days or whatever so i gotta work out in today i've worked out every single day this entire month except for one day so even if i take tomorrow off i will have worked out for like 29 of the 31 days of this month which is crazy so i think i earned a rest day anyway so tomorrow i will not work out and we're kind of just doing like a i don't know kind of like a free-for-all day like we got takeout for lunch we're gonna get probably pizza for dinner and i don't know because it's kind of an exciting day it's kind of like a celebration day sort of so we figured we might as well treat ourselves to all the foods that we like and just have like a really fun day just relaxing just kind of doing whatever we want to do we're gonna watch shows and stuff like that so yeah we're super excited okay this is so funny they just did it it was pretty painless it was like i thought just kind of like opened it up they finished like the wire kind of up and in you could feel it going in it wasn't very comfortable they just injected them but now you probably won't be able to tell but i'm on the table literally inclined so my head is lower and my feet are higher <laughs> so that the gravity can like help them like this is what i do i knew that laying upside down had something to do with it so <laughs> anyway this is my wristband showing that i got checked in they like took my temperature they had me answer all these questions so they're definitely being very safe but yeah now i'm literally laying at an angle like this and my feet are higher my head's down here letting them do their thing so i'm gonna lay here for 15 minutes and then i guess we're done all right ken has been debriefed he had to wait in the car so he was just waiting out here for a while how do you feel Aww. hold on home now ken is like so cute he gets so emotional like, even thinking about <laughs> the concept of getting pregnant which is really cute but we are home now um the nurse here let me put this down i like had to pee so bad <laughs> when we got in there and i was like can i pee really quick and they're like actually it's good for your bladder to be full for i guess it like pushes your uterus forward or <clears throat> i don't even actually know but i was like okay well perfect but now i still have to pee but now i'm afraid to pee because i don't want to like i don't know i know i can't pee it out but you know i'm just being extra <laughs> but um i kind of just want to recap the process and like the experience um obviously it was a little bit different because of covid but um we went in there just like did blood pressure like all that normal stuff and then there was a different nurse my normal nurse was there and then they had like a nurse that i guess I don't know if she's from a different practice or if she's being hired or just like switching locations or what um but she basically just like had to do a bunch of she's been doing iuis forever and she was so sweet she was like this older woman she was really 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 cute i loved her 
and so she um, did it and my nurse kind of like supervised so um, but she was awesome it was like a really good experience I loved just like the whole vibe it was really really nice the room had like this really nice relaxing music on so just went over everything they made sure that like the sample was Ken's and it was all like the right stuff for the right person I guess Ken was saying that he had to sign a consent form saying that like his sample may lead to a pregnancy and that the person that's meant to get pregnant from the sample is me and like all this stuff so he couldn't be I don't know tricked into something but it's pretty funny I mean of course they like have to make sure they're not messing anything up but he, Ken was kind of worried about his sample but they said it was good he had like double the amount of like sperm that they needed for the sample and um it had a pretty high motility rate and all that stuff so um it, it looked like the sample was really good or has maybe as good as it can be probably not really good but it was good enough definitely more than good enough so that's really nice and then they um just suck it all out into like this little kind of like syringe but it has like a really long catheter on it and it's like kind of pokey and the whole process was similar to the OBGYN experience, just like your normal annual, except for they like snake that thing all the way up and you can, I could literally feel it like going up and like through into the, you know, area where it lands. And so that's the cool part about it though. They literally like wash the sample, get the best, most concentrated amount of guys that they can get out of it. And then they literally deposit it exactly where it needs to be. I'm ovulating today, so the egg should be either there or getting there any minute. So it's like everything's all, you know, basically as ideal almost as you can get it. So that's pretty cool. And then afterwards, they're like, for 15 minutes, you're just going to lie here. They actually, like you saw in the video, put me on a complete incline. And I laid there for 15 minutes. And then the doctor came back in. They did, she did say to like not do, because y'all know I work out. I do very intense workouts. And she did say, that she would not advise doing anything intense like kickboxing or like anything you know running really long distances like she said 20 miles i don't know who runs 20 miles but um yeah so she said take this weekend off which today is friday and i worked out this morning so that's fine i'll take two days off which i have not taken two days off in a row i think since like january or something it's been so long and now it's almost june so it's been an extremely long time so it's gonna be weird not working out for two days but that's totally fine and then i just don't know what to do like i don't i don't want to do anything crazy even over the next two weeks after that but i also don't want to like obviously not work out i want to still be doing the normal stuff that i do i don't want to like undo what i've done so i'm just not sure what i'm gonna go back to doing after this like couple days off i obviously would hate to do anything to jeopardize you know anything happening but at the same time i don't want to just sit on my butt for two weeks so i need to find some kind of like middle ground uh, i think i could just do like strength stuff you know like stuff where i'm not jumping around and like really going crazy but just kind of isolating strength kind of workouts i think would be fine and then she gave me all the normal stuff like don't take ibuprofen and that kind of stuff it was just so weird there was like a point like when i was laying on that table i was like just one of those like moments when reality hits you and i'm like i'm literally laying on a table getting inseminated <laughs> like what is my life like you just never imagine that there's gonna be a day where you're just in a doctor's office on a rainy friday getting inseminated like it was just such a funny weird thing to think about it was fairly painless i mean it definitely did not feel comfortable like having that thing like climb up into you know all your tubes and whatnot it didn't like hurt like i wasn't like like feeling pain but it did not feel like good necessarily so you could and it was just so weird feeling it but it was not painful it was super quick pretty easy i mean it was honestly a very good experience it's really like kind of no big deal like i mean it's a big deal but like the actual process of it it's not anything crazy that's crazy like i might be pregnant like getting pregnant today which is funny the nurse came in the other nurse the one that's like visiting and she walked in she's like hi i'm like are you gonna get me knocked up today <laughs> And she's like, I love when people tell me that I got them pregnant. So she was really cute. It was it was a really good experience. It was really not bad, honestly. It was not bad at all. So I'm feeling very excited, very hopeful. I feel very, 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 very positive. She said to take a pregnancy test exactly 14 days from today. Or no, from tomorrow. Do not take it early. She was like, do not take it early, whatever you do. Take it, you know, no sooner than two weeks from today. So and my periods technically do before that. So but i think i want to try to not really pay attention to where i'm at in my cycle if i can help it because i don't want to be like counting down or being like oh my period's doing like two days and like you know what i mean i don't want to do that to myself and i typically don't like most of the time i don't really pay attention to what day i'm on except for the first you know 
couple days when I have my period and then I'm ovulation testing, but after day like 12, 13, 14, I usually don't even think about it. So I'm hoping that I can avoid looking so that I'm not constantly, you know, worried about it, thinking about it. I don't want to stress myself out or get, you know, anxious or over, you know, make this weight any more painful or stressful. So anyway, that is how the day went. So, and the sun came out. It was so funny. We were driving there. It was all rainy and then we left and it's now like sunny and beautiful and like the roads were all dried up and I'm like, maybe this is a good sign. I literally spent that whole 15 minutes. I was laying upside down pretty much just praying <laughs> like god can this please be the time that it works please but anyway now i've been sitting here and rambling for a while so that i think this clip pretty much concludes the may 2020 process the ttc process our first round of iui that's intrauterine insemination if anyone doesn't know what that stands for i'm sure if you're watching this you do so that's that it is going to be june here in a couple days my birthday's in june this would be a really nice birthday present so anyway ken's so cute getting all emotional too he's just he's so excited so anyway we're probably gonna get some pizza tonight our favorite pizza and i'm just gonna take it so easy today i want to just chill read like just really take it easy because out of all the days in my life to take it easy this is probably one of the most one of the ones where i you know not deserve it but one of the ones where i definitely should take advantage of it anyway i guess i will see you guys for i don't know what the next update's gonna be is it gonna be in a couple days is it gonna be when i'm pregnancy testing i have no idea so Wish me all the luck, even though you're gonna see this after the fact, but I'm super excited. Okay, Ken's all the way downstairs, so I'm sure you can't hear me. My period's not due until either tomorrow or the next day, but I'm gonna do a pregnancy test. So...